CDCI Research for Applied Practice, RAP, Winter 2022 Brief. Developing concepts with children and adults who have limited or no access to vision and hearing. Summarized by Barbara Miles, Christopher Russell, Emma Nelson, Helene Gallagher, and Lisa Woodward. Source, Miles B. and McCletchy B., 2008. Developing Concepts with Children Who Are Deafblind, National Consortium on Deafblindness. Introduction. Concepts are ideas we all have about how the world works. Concepts help us make sense of the world we live in. Children and adults who have limited access to vision and hearing or who are deafblind have trouble understanding their world without careful partners. They need families and teachers and friends to help them develop concepts that will lead to their happiness as adults. Think about how much a two-year-old child who has good vision and hearing already knows about the world. He or she may already have these kinds of concepts. Routines such as meals, bedtimes, dressing, etc. The order or sequence of routine. 1. Start by noticing and listening as a way of respect. Watch the child or adult engage with the environment around them and pause. Notice what the student's whole body is telling you, especially their hands, feet, movements, and facial expressions. As you observe, begin to think, I wonder what this student is thinking and experiencing right now. I wonder what concepts this student has in mind at this moment. And also notice what the student seems to be interested in. How might you use your observation to approach an interaction with this student? Figure 1a. A teenage girl and her intervener are on a walk in early spring. The girl is reaching her right hand down from her wheelchair to explore a flower on the ground. Her intervener watches her hand and body as a way of showing respect before entering into conversation. Figure 1b. The intervener has imagined that the girl might be interested in smelling the flowers, so she picks a flower and they begin their conversation by smelling the flower together. Their smiles confirm their mutual enjoyment. The intervener is signing the word flower as part of the conversation. 2. Take turns. Children and adults come to understand turn-taking through repeated experiences. A child or adult moves, and a partner responds by moving with them or by imitating their movements and by taking turns. The possible concepts being developed are my movements communicate. Taking turns and communicating is fun. Once a child or adult learns to take turns within a playful interaction with objects and with others, they are more likely to realize they can take turns with words. Taking turns in meaningful ways and sharing interests and feelings are the basic elements of all conversational interaction and relationships. Figure 2a. A young girl sits on the floor in a supported seat, facing her intervener. She and the intervener have their hands up in the air, ready to play a pat cake game. She is making eye contact with her intervener. Figure 2b. The young girl and her intervener continue in the same position on the floor and bring their hands together to pat each other's hands. The girl shifts her eyes to the right to peek at her hands as they touch the intervener's. Figure 2C. The young girl and her intervener continue in the same position on the floor and move their hands away from each other. The girl looks at the intervener, smiles, and moves her hands closer to the intervener to indicate that she wants to continue the game. 3. Establish mutual attention and interest in a common topic. Mutual attention is first established through touch if the child is blind and or through vision if the child has usable vision. Individuals who are deafblind explore objects with their hands and bodies. If a partner explores along with the child or adult, touching alongside and pointing, 
looking and smiling, it can be the beginning of a good conversation. The possible concept being developed is, It is fun to explore. Other people are interested in the things I like. The world is fascinating. I want to keep exploring. When people feel affirmed in their feelings, they develop stronger self-concepts, as well as positive concepts about others. Figure 3a. A teenager and her partner are participating in a shared experience of making bread. The partner is holding the bread dough in her hands and using natural language to talk about what they are doing. The teenager is reaching out and touching the dough with her left hand while holding the bowl with her right hand. The teenager and her partner are both smiling as they touch the bread dough together. Figure 3b. Later, the partner notices her smile, lightly touches her cheek, and comments, I see you smiling. I'm smiling too. A simple gesture like this can show your partner that you resonate with them, that you share their emotion at that moment. 4. Use memories as conversation topics. You can encourage the student to remember. You can use gestures, signs, speech, and real objects to have conversations about things you have experienced together. This will help the student develop concepts about what has happened, what is about to happen, and what will happen. You can use memory boxes and memory books as concrete references to help create conversations about shared experiences. Since touch is the first sense to develop for everyone, it is often useful to incorporate touch as part of a memory book experience, especially for students who are totally blind. Memory books are also a very concrete and valuable way to share school experiences with families. This sharing allows the student to develop the concept, My teachers and family talk with each other. Here are two examples of how important memory is in helping a deaf-blind individual develop concepts about how the world works. Figure 4a. This young woman who is deaf-blind just took a walk outside together with her intervener. Along the way, they gathered some leaves, which the intervener noticed were interesting to the young woman. Back in the classroom, they together taped the leaves to a piece of paper that will go into a memory book. The intervener is careful not to control the young woman's hands as they make this page together. When they regularly go through the memory book together, They have many opportunities for natural conversations that reinforce vocabulary and concepts. Figure 4b. A deafblind teenager who has some vision attended a school prom. His teacher took these photos, which they later added to his classroom memory book. One photo shows a friend of his dancing with a girl, and the caption written underneath says, Aaron danced with Andrea. The other photo shows the teenager himself dancing with his date. The caption underneath says, I danced with Heather. 5. Don't make assumptions. Be open to surprise. It is easy for any of us to make assumptions about what another person means when they use language. A common example would be a child signing mother and a teacher or intervener making the assumption that the child is asking for their mother. But what if the child is just thinking about her mother or wanting to tell a story about what she did with mom yesterday? If we listen carefully, a child is likely to develop a positive self-concept. People listen to me carefully and they are really interested in what I have to say. Figure 5a. Imagine that this girl has just signed mother. Her teacher signs mother back to let the girl know that her message has been received. And then she pauses, as if to say, I see that you are thinking about your mother. Do you want to say more? The teacher might also say something like, I wonder if you are thinking about your mother. Some children and adults who do not yet have formal language may be talking about real experiences when they make what might seem to be random body movements. Don't assume their gestures are meaningless. The gestures may be trying to tell a story. These memory gestures are sometimes referred to as bodily emotional traces, 
or BETs. Figure 5b. A child uses a thinking gesture with the fingers on his right hand moving to the side of his head while he processes the experience he is having. If the partner notices that gesture and simply acknowledges it with a respectful, receptive touch, the child is likely to develop a positive self-concept that people listen to me. Six, use language to talk about a concept in the moment you think the child or adult has that concept on their mind. Conversations begin with trusting relationships that are developed over time. Both the timing and the use of meaningful words are crucial. When you are interacting with people who are deafblind and you can tell that they have an idea or they are thinking about an action, that is the time to use a word in a mode that is appropriate for the person. Remember, people who are deafblind often communicate in several modes. These modes may include movement, sound, gesture, body language, speech, objects, concrete symbols, sign, and or communication devices. Considerations for combining modes of com communication. Sign and or say, jump, I see you're happy, when you know the child is likely to be enjoying that action. Sign and or say, we touch cat, soft, when you and the child have just touched the cat together. Sign and or say, enjoy, when the child or adult is obviously enjoying the experience and invite them to touch your smile. If the child or adult is blind, you can also respectfully touch the child's own smile. Figure 6a. A speech language pathologist supports a child's exploration of an adapted book by signing into her right hand. The child follows the book visually and with her left hand at the same time. This contact with the girl will give her partner the opportunity to notice when the girl seems delighted and sign the words, I see you like that, at that moment. 7. Model Actions Children and adults who are deafblind often do not have many opportunities to learn by simple observation. People with vision and hearing learn many concepts about the world by seeing and or hearing others do things and then choosing to join in. A clear benefit of the teaching by example is that when skillfully done, it lessens the likelihood of power struggles. Providing access, wait time, and repetition of experiences does require patience, but it is well worth it in the long run. Figure 7a. This girl doesn't yet know how to brush her own hair. She has very limited vision and hearing. So her mother is leaning in closely as the daughter lies on the floor and reaches her left hand up to touch her mother's hair, feeling it move as her mother brushes it. Figure 7b. Taken some minutes later, the girl, still lying next to her mother, reaches for the hairbrush and briefly brushes her own hair. We could guess that she might have a concept now that says something like, my mother brushes her hair, and I want to try doing that too. Figure 7c. Eight, invite the person who is deafblind to have access to the environment. Use respectful touch and gestures to invite the person who is deafblind to access the world. This can provide a secure base for them to explore their environment. It is especially important to pay attention to the social environment. This may be as simple as a light touch on the shoulder or back. The next step is to wait for them to initiate the next movement. Support the development of peer interactions and social exchanges. Model patience with wait time and respond to whatever initiations you see them make. Figures 8a and b. A teacher facilitates peer-to-peer -peer interactions, modeling for one student how to support another student with hand-under-hand -hand signing to request more drink. 9. Make experiences tactile and within close range. 
Many concepts are learned first with reference to the deafblind person's own body and involve touch. For example, on and off can be learned by getting on and off a swing. In order for objects to be meaningful, most children and adults who are deafblind need to be given plenty of time to touch and explore them. Figure 9a. Two sisters are in a cornfield. The younger sister is pushing her older sister's wheelchair close to the corn stalks so she can have a meaningful experience. The older sister reaches out her right arm to feel a stalk. Perhaps she learns that they are tall and dry and that corn grows up from the ground. Figure 9b. A young boy is participating in his first grade science unit all about pumpkins. He is sitting in front of a big pumpkin, exploring it with multiple senses. Vision, hearing, touch, smell, and taste. The adult partner holds pieces of the pumpkin in her hand. He pulls her hand close to his so he can smell the inside of the pumpkin, taste it, and look at it more closely. This experience may help him develop the concepts that the pumpkin grew from seeds, and the seeds are small. The pumpkins are big, and that pumpkins are wet on the inside, and they smell good. Figure 9c. A young boy participates in the classroom song of the day. He positions his body close to the teacher and the guitar in the middle of the circle. He reaches out for the teacher's hands as she strums the guitar and sings with the class. He also places his head on the guitar in order to feel the vibration as she plays. The teacher always positions herself in the same location in the circle for the song of the day. He often moves his body close to her so he can participate. The possible concepts being developed are People make music with instruments. Songs have a rhythm. Other people are interested in music too. I can join in when I want. 10. Use the person's interests to help design activities. Whenever possible, create learning opportunities while engaging in activities that are fun and interesting to the student. You will have their attention from the beginning and be able to further develop concepts through play and exploration. For example, if they are interested in lights, explore the parts of a flashlight with them. Take it apart and put it back together again. Create an opportunity to share joy while exploring how things work. It is important to develop and facilitate activities that are person-centered based on the individual's preferences. Figure 10. A child is seated cross-legged on a trampoline. This student likes movement and vibration. Her favorite activity is to bounce on the trampoline with a partner's help. The teacher supports the child with a light touch under her elbows to sign her own personal home sign for more jump. Notice how the teacher uses respectful touch and allows the student to start the interaction. This develops into a turn-taking sequence. After the child has bounced, the teacher takes a turn so that it becomes a shared activity. 11. Provide interesting materials that encourage exploration. When children are very young, you can watch how they explore their environment when interacting with the objects when they are alone. Notice the kinds of materials that are interesting for them to explore. Do they like a particular color, texture, sound, or movement? Try to find other objects with similar qualities. You can also notice what part of their body they use to explore. Hands, mouth, feet, head, etc. Children are more likely to explore when they are comfortable and in a safe environment that encourages their curiosity. We can set up meaningful environments for children with consistent placements of objects and materials in order to support the child to independently explore. This independent, interactive exploration is referred to as active learning. Active learning helps children to learn many important self-concepts as well as concepts about the world around them. 
Figure 11a. A toddler is lying on a rug on her back in a little room under a variety of interesting objects that are hanging above her. She is holding a bright pink curly string of material in each hand and exploring a third string of material with her right foot. She is also looking at the bright pink color. Possible concepts being developed are The world around me is interesting and fun. I like things that are brightly colored. I like things that make noise. I can explore by myself. 12. Document the concepts that each individual knows. You can take video clips of a deaf-blind person interacting, communicating, and participating in activities. You can save videos that show how their understanding of concepts changes over time. Videos can help others, like new teachers or caregivers, become familiar with each person's unique ways of thinking and interacting. Videos can also be a tool for an intervener, teacher, or family member to learn from their own successes and mistakes. You can look several times at a brief video of your own interaction with a person who is deafblind. You can notice how you move, if you take turns, and if your mute movements communicate what you were hoping. You can also notice what communication you might have missed from your partner. Figure 12a. A special educator is sitting at a table watching a video on her laptop of herself interacting with a student. The expression on her face shows she is thinking about her interaction with her student and learning from it. She can see things the student may be communicating that she could not see during the interaction in the moment. Perhaps she can use the insight to improve her next interaction with this student. Use family and school routines for learning concepts. Routines are natural opportunities for learning. If things are repeated daily, weekly, seasonally, then the person who is deafblind has the opportunity to become used to sequences. They can also develop body memory of the actions and they can become more independent. It helps if the routines are enjoyable and meaningful. In routines, it is often helpful if the partner goes first. Then they can provide a model for a child or adult who is deafblind. A lighthearted attitude helps. For example, a partner might say, I don't like brushing my teeth either, but we have to do it to keep our teeth clean. A lighthearted attitude can be expressed with body language if a child or adult does not know much language yet. Routines provide wonderful opportunities for developing concepts. Figure 13a. A deafblind kindergartner and a woman are eating a snack side by side. The woman is chewing a cookie as the kindergartner reaches up to feel her mouth as she chews. The concept being developed might be, Other people eat too and enjoy eating. Being blind, he might not know that other people eat. He might also not have a model of table manners if he doesn't have a partner willing to show him. Figure 13b. A teacher is involving a child who is deafblind in the routine of watering the plants in the classroom. They do the job together. This gives the child the opportunity to develop many concepts, such as people have jobs, people can cooperate in the classroom, Plants need water to stay alive. When the spray bottle is empty, we need to fill it. Notice how the teacher's hand is underneath the student's hand so he can follow her movements and learn the motions involved in the routine of watering the plants. 14. Use objects, pictures, and drawing to enhance concepts. Objects, pictures, and drawings help move any conversation toward literacy. It is useful for a teacher or a parent or an intervener to remember this, especially at the moments when a deafblind child or adult has a strong interest in a conversation or in a particular thing. Children and adults who are deafblind often need to participate in drawing an object and writing a word in order for it to have meaning for them. Figure 14a. This boy, who is deafblind, 
has noticed his teacher's ring and is very interested in it. A whole conversation about the ring followed this moment. Luckily, she noticed because she was paying attention to what he was interested in. Figure 14b. Later on, the teacher drew the ring by placing it on a piece of paper. The boy joined in, placing his hand on hers as she drew. He also felt the motions of writing as she wrote the word ring on the paper. Body memory is part of learning. This boy may be developing concepts such as, my teacher is interested in rings too, and drawing and writing are fun. The picture of the ring and the word that names it became part of a shared memory book that the teacher and the boy can refer back to regularly. 15. Include the person who is deafblind in the whole process. Sometimes it may appear to a person who is deafblind that objects or people just magically appear or disappear. Including a child or adult who is deafblind in the whole process of activities is likely to help them develop a better understanding of the way things work. For example, at mealtime, invite the person who is deafblind to join you in taking out the food from the refrigerator, utensils from the drawer, and plates from the cabinet. When it is time to make an art project, invite them to help gather the supplies. Although activities may take a little longer to complete in this way, each one will be much more meaningful and full of opportunities for learning. Figure 15a. Two teachers include a student in a supportive walker as they go together from one activity to the next. They support the student to interact at her own comfortable pace. The teachers are kneeling down, positioned at the student's eye level. This is a child-centered interaction. Figure 15b. This set of photos shows a boy participating in the whole process of mailing a postcard. First, he is buying postcards from a man at a counter. Next, he is sitting at a table, brailing the postcards with an adult. Next, he is standing with two other children, reaching his arms up to place the mail in the slot of a large red mailbox. Conclusion. Learning from each other. Individuals with deaf blindness have a lot to teach others around them about the way we all develop concepts. Deafblind people will learn to explore their world more fully when their partners use these unique approaches and techniques. In turn, we who have the privilege to know people with deafblindness each have the opportunity to experience the world more fully in ways we never have before. Miles B. and McClutchy B. 2008. Developing Concepts with Children Who Are Deafblind. National Consortium on Deaf Blindness. Additional resources. Miles B. and Riggio M. Editors, 1999. Remarkable Conversations, a Guide to Developing Meaningful Communication with Children and Young Adults Who Are Deaf Blind. Watertown, Massachusetts, Perkins School for the Blind. For more information on the UVM Center on Disability and Community Inclusion, CDCI, and our Research for Applied Practice wrap briefs, please visit go.uvm.edu slash CDCI research. For questions or comments on this wrap brief, please email cdciresearch at uvm.edu. The University of Vermont Center on Disability and Community Inclusion. We support we teach, we study, we share, we connect. Find out more at go.uvm.edu slash cdci.